housing services, making sure that all the things that our citizens needs need are provided to them. You know, the problem has been over the last couple of decades, Washington has not been a very good partner for you. And all of you know that, and you understand it very, very well. And this is something that I intend to change uh, as President of the United States. What's happened is, from health care to transportation, uh, to housing, to all the rural development, which I know a lot of you care deeply about, and I care deeply about. You know, I grew up in rural America. Uh, my parents still live there, and it's the heart and soul of who I am as a human being today. And we need a President of the United States who understands that what we do in Des Moines matters, what we do in Davenport matters, you know, but what we do in Cedar Rapids matters, Iowa City, but what we do in smaller towns, smaller communities across Iowa and across America is also enormously important. One of the concerns I have is sometimes I think presidential candidates think of rural America uh, as a place they fly over when they're going from New York to California. Well, that is not the way I see it. It is part of who I am and something I will make a huge priority uh, as President of the United States. Because what's happened is the federal government's failure to meet its responsibility has put a crushing burden on you and counties and communities and the people that you represent. Uh, people all over this country, uh, particularly, for example, seniors who operate on fixed incomes worry about their property tax bill. And all of you see this every single day in the public service that you're performing. The truth of the matter is, though, that while property taxes are set locally, decisions that are made in Washington and the failures in Washington play an enormous role in putting a heavier burden and a more difficult burden on property taxpayers. What we need is a president of the United States and a federal government that's actually a good partner to local communities. And I don't believe, just to be clear about this, I don't believe for a minute that Washington has all the answers, far from it. But I think what's been happening is Washington and the federal government has actually been making things harder for local communities, not easier. So we need to change that. Government, whether it's based in D.C. or Des Moines or in small communities all here, all across the state of Iowa, is meant to serve the people. And we should be able to work together, federal government, local government, county government, to ensure that people are getting what they need. Their transportation needs are being met, their housing needs are being met, their health care needs are being met. We're building out the infrastructure that's necessary for communities, small towns and communities, to be able to thrive and do well economically and on behalf of their citizens. As president, what I want to do is make the federal government the good partner that it needs to be to ensure that government as a whole is doing what it needs to do for its people. So today, I want to announce a plan to create a new partnership with local communities and property taxpayers. First, I'll pass universal health care and relieve the burden on county health departments. And all of you know very, very well what that burden is. Number one, the county employees, by providing health care for county employees, takes an increasingly large percentage, and sometimes a very large percentage, of county budgets. We need to relieve that bad financial burden from counties and from county employees. And also, we need to relieve the burden of the uninsured who go, get their, get their health care, get their health care provided in local communities, local hospitals, uh, local health departments. But that, that is being paid for if they're not insured by local uh, property taxes. We need to do something about that. We need to have universal health care in America that covers every single man, woman, and child. I have, I have proposed that. I did it in February of this year. I was the first presidential candidate to propose true universal health care. And it's mandated in my case, which means that every man, woman, and child in America will be covered. We will cover the cracks that exist in this system, which means no more pre-existing conditions. It means mental health parity. It means preventive care and chronic care and long-term care are all covered. It also means dental and vision care are covered. And people can take their health care with them wherever they go. So that we have no more of this job lot that we're seeing today. But universal health care will have a direct impact on the financial stability and viability of counties and local communities. Second, I want to make sure that the federal government meets its responsibility on special education. You know, for decades, Washington has failed to, to, to meet its promise 
to pay 40% of special education. The result of that, as all of you know very well, is that burden gets shifted to local counties and local communities. What I want to do as President of the United States is submit a budget to the Congress that actually gets the federal government, the United States government, on track to meet its responsibilities so that responsibility is no longer just being borne by local communities. Third, we need to revitalize and strengthen rural America. And we need to revitalize and strengthen rural communities. And there are a whole group of things we need to do in order to accomplish that. The starting place is as we make our transition from a carbon-based economy to clean, renewable sources of energy, that transition creates great economic opportunity. We can create a minimum of a million new jobs in that transition. And those jobs can and should be located in many smaller towns, communities, and rural communities across this country to help replace so many of the jobs that have been lost, manufacturing jobs that have left America, in my judgment, as a result of bad trade policy. So what we should be doing is helping replace those jobs. And that transition to clean, renewable sources of energy presents a great opportunity for that. Second, we need a president of the United States who will enforce uh, country of origin labeling so that people know where the products they're buying are coming from. And a president who actually encourages people in small towns, small communities, and across America to buy local. It is good for local farmers. It is good for local economies. And it's good for our environment because these products that are coming, including food products that are coming from halfway around the world, carry an enormous carbon footprint with them. So they're doing damage to our environment at the same time that they're doing damage to local communities. I will be the president that does that, that encourages America to buy local, that enforces country of origin labeling laws. We also need to make a real investment in rural America. We need to build out the technology, broadband. We need to map every place in America that high speed broadband internet does not exist. And we need to work in partnership with private enterprise to get it built out. Because there's no excuse for rural communities, for places that are further away from big cities, not having broadband. It is crucial to small towns and small communities being able to compete economically, being able to compete across America, and for that matter, being able to compete globally. And also to help strengthen schools in smaller towns and smaller communities, we ought to actually provide uh, incentive pay, bonus pay, to teachers who are willing to go to the places we need them the most, including in smaller towns and smaller communities, so that we can help the, help the schools in those communities. Four, the federal government is the largest consumer in the world and has enormous bargaining power to negotiate better prices with the supplies and equipment that it's pur purchasing. What I'm going to do as President of the United States is to issue an executive order directing the GSA, the General Services Administration, to expand the ability of state and local governments to take advantage of the discounts that are available under federal purchasing contracts, produce volume of pricing, and relieving unnecessary duplication of effort. The idea here is the federal government, this great consumer of equipment, of products, that has so much market power to bargain and get better prices, the federal government should be partnering with local government with county government so that you can take advantage of the same discounts and the same pricing discounts. So that we, you get to take advantage of what the federal government takes advantage of every day. So as president, what I basically want to do is make sure that we're once again a good partner with local communities. Together we can make sure that all Americans have the tools and support they need and we can do what I've been talking about now for a long time here in Iowa. I'll tell you a quick anecdote. I was in uh, a tunnel with my wife Elizabeth a few couple months ago, and we were driving through down, we downtown a tunnel. We stopped uh, at a stop sign, and my wife looked over at me and said, I swear, if somebody asked me, I could give them directions. <laughs> <laughs> so don't tell me I don't know, but I don't know and understand Iowa. I've been, every, been in every one of your 99 counties, not once, but twice. Uh, and some of them I think